waited a minute or two, so people will, I'm sure will, uh, some people will still join. But So good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to uh, part three of the um, mini school of uh, Professor Nico Orche and, and his dream team. And uh, I don't need to introduce Nico again because you already spent several hours with him over the last couple of weeks. But um, <clears throat> I will ask Nico maybe to kindly introduce the, the other members of, of, of his dream team because he knows them probably much better than I do. So Nico, um, you're welcome to start um, to share your screen. And, and while it uh, sets up, maybe you can kindly briefly introduce the, your, your team members that uh, will of play our role today. Yeah, thank you very yeah. much. Uh, thank you, Francesco. Uh, well, so uh, today, today we're going, to, uh, the, the, we're going to go through a little bit of uh, finalizing the D model and then uh, come with a few outcomes you know we're going to discuss a little bit what um, what has evolved from the last uh, the last meetings the last lectures what uh, new ideas came up and we're going to see what is the situation with the third wave or other waves in italy we're going to go quickly because today we have a, a special uh, lecturer jeremy Dutuat, who is one of the of the co-authors of uh, our ADO paper. ADO is a, is a national park here, Jeremy, where, which is full of elephants, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful uh, national park close to uh, where Asundini lives, to Port Elizabeth, it's called, the, uh, and we have the ADO, which is, you know, Amaro, Dudue, and Orthe. So I call it the ADO paper here in, the, in our GitHub repository. And uh, Jeremy has been involved in, in, from the beginning in developing the, the codes, the error propagation. And he has this, uh, these uh, codes on C++, which are based on root. And he does the, this for, for life at Ganil, at the, at the National Laboratory, one of the top national laboratories in, in the world, where they are running experiments now with the most sophisticated, the most advanced detectors, Agatha, these uh, segmented detectors with many, many little detectors inside. So you can track down where the gamma rays hit and hopefully you can do a, a beautiful Doppler correction of these gamma rays being emitted at 10% the speed of light or whatever. And Jeremy plays a big role there in all the, uh, all the computational uh, parts of getting the, the physics out of uh, these very complicated systems. So he's a, a, a beautiful person to have around, a genius with the computers. And it is a, my great pleasure to, to introduce uh, Jeremy Dutua to, to all of you. He comes from the University of uh, Lyon. And he will, uh, he will talk to us about the codes that he has developed. Um, we have develop, developed together, although he has, uh, he has his, his style. At the beginning, each one has his own way of plotting, but at the end, we have taken, I think I, I've taken myself Jeremy's uh, way, which is, is more, much more powerful in the sense that everyone learns how to use root and how to use C++. And as we mentioned in previous uh, lectures, uh, root is being used not only in nuclear physics, particle physics, but also nuclear physics, biology, and astronomy laboratories all over the world, right? where big data is involved and not only big data, but uh, with all the possibilities that, uh, that uh, Jeremy, as he knows very well, do these compli complicated arrays of uh, segmented detect detectors and that's only the, the gamma part. Also we have silicon detectors, more, more complicated uh, arrays where you know, the more channels, the more detectors you have, the more complication comes. And this is why we need people like uh, Jeremy to, to make life a little bit easier to all of us. So uh, Jeremy, thank you for coming today to, to the NITHAP lectures. It's a great, a great pleasure to finally talk to you <laughs> face to face. Um. Hey, th thank you for this uh, wonderful uh, introduction, Nico. Uh, so, um, how, how do we proceed? Do, do, do I start uh, now with the code or do uh, you yeah, have no, something? Let me, to... let me as, we, as we discuss, let me quickly go through the, what we have developed in the last just 10, 15 minutes and then you, 
Yes, okay. You take uh, you take over, Perfect. okay? I just want, so. wanted to to say uh, good uh, good afternoon to everyone, and I was uh, it was not possible for me to to come for the two last uh, lectures, but uh, thanks to the the recording you have uh, you have done, uh, it was possible for, for me to uh, to watch it. So it was very nice, and we'll see <laughs> for you. the following. Thank you so much, uh, Jeremy. So let's go quickly so you have enough time for this. So let me actually introduce some of the things that have evolved. Actually, also for Jeremy to know, for everyone, because everyone here is involved and we are doing some research. So this is the GitHub, and, and I still have to learn how to use this cloning and, and move the things around. But basically, the, the new codes, Jeremy has uh, provided the new codes that he's presenting today which uh, uh, apparently they have a little bit of a different uh, way of uh, working, but uh, they, he will explain why we have new codes in a little bit. So we have uh, always, we always go through our publications. Um, I want to talk about the universal, universality of the, of the COVID-19 a little bit later, but right now there are a couple of things that we have, investi we have been investigated lately. And I want to investigate in particular. So I'm talking about the, we always talk about the, uh, let me see if I have here, about the D function. And the D function, as we all know, right? The death uh, function is equal to um, A, E, T minus T naught over B. And then we have this uh, one plus C, E, T minus T naught B, right? So we have uh, investigated and we say that everything depends on A, B, and C. And as you know, A, B, and C uh, in our PDF here, A, B, and C depends on the different uh, possibilities. B, B depends on, or A depends on the death rate, on the infected cases at the beginning. So, they depend on the on the time of uh, death, the tau, which is as we say is twenty plus minus five uh, days, and b here depends on one over the spreading rate and the total population n. Right. So, but as we know, these parameters change with time. And Claude Makatsu from the mathematics department at UWC, he brought that to uh, to our attention the other day. Rightfully so. Because you know we have a, a plateau, then they go up again. This is for a and change as as a time as a, as, a, as a function of time, and then you reach another plateau. So things become stable. But it will be very important for us to understand how these guys actually depend on time, right? If there's any function of these parameters, then we can uh, trace down the evolution of the pandemic. And obviously you can make a better prediction, right? So this is one of the things that came out. Another thing that came out is using uh, also uh, Jeremy's code on uh, getting to voltmeters. You remember this python.py. So you can access voltmeter. And uh, today, Jeremy has also given us a new, a new code. But remember, I, I introduced that the other day and uh, uh, well, we can go to the new code, which probably has the same function. It's the first time. Uh, okay, let's open it. So uh, here we are. COVID-19, LS2, and probably somewhere here. Dot .py, there we go. Uh, we can edit the old one. And obviously, Jeremy will may, I don't know if you will mention the, the different functions which make collect the data, these uh, different functions which collect the data from the world of meters. So some of uh, our ideas was to do the same and take actually the data from the uh, excess death, uh, which are here. So to investigate, because uh, this is, uh, this is the, these are the death excess uh, in Africa, in South Africa, sorry. And as we saw the other day, we uh, if we go to South Africa, the pattern, I was looking at different countries, but the, the pattern for South Africa is here. 
this is for the the second wave but we can change that to uh to be from instead of first of november we can do first of march and then we see that this pattern corresponds to the excess death that we have uh here right corresponds the peak you know these are the the excess deaths over any previous years and they correspond where you have the first wave and the second wave so we would like to study how uh, close is this correspondence so uh, jeremy some of the students in our our whatsapp uh, the whatsapp uh, we call it young nuclear warriors here they're already working on a way to modify your code and use this link and collect the data from here and use the codes that we have to see whether we have similar parameters or you know the 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 one-to-one -one correspondence to explore the one-to-one -one correspondence of excess death versus uh, the real COVID-19 death, right? So we are exploring the time dependence of the A, B, C parameters in the D function, how excess deaths uh, relate to COVID death. We are working uh, uh, also very much on the, on the Monte Carlo uh, paper that uh, Amaro will present next week. Hopefully by next week we have our first draft. That's my intention. But uh, Enrique Amaro will present on his uh, Monte Carlo application on the WhatsApp, I mean on the on the on the Android, on the cell phone, where everyone uh, can play with the different Monte Carlo parameters and uh, explore how to stop the pandemic, for instance. For instance, right? So these are new things that uh, will come uh, next uh, Tuesday. So then we have we have exploring. You know, I want to uh, outline the fact that we are not out of the of the situation yet. And actually, actually, things like I was checking Italy, uh, Israel. Israel is coming down. I was checking all these countries, Chile, with the, where the vaccination has been. Uh, you see, here we have we are, I'm I'm taking this and this second wave, and then suddenly in Italy, you have a, you know. This was the, uh, actually, this was the second wave. This was the third wave, and now they're coming with a fourth wave. So remember the first wave, what happened in March last year, last year. But you see, the situation is not finished until it's finished. You know, in, in France, unfortunately, I, I heard, uh, Jeremy, that you are also in, on the lockdown. So, you know, it's, it's not uh, like we are going to, uh, we are not in danger. I mean, we are out of danger yet. We have to be very, very, very uh, careful with the situation. Unfortunately, we are not, we're not uh, at the end of all of this. And then we go here uh, to uh, COVID-19 pictures that I took lately. There was something happening last uh, March, Friday 19th. So you no, know, suddenly there was a point here, a data point, which, uh, which uh, not all the models are doing that, but suddenly there were 300 deaths which uh, on average, these are seven day average data points. But it was the first indication uh, according to the D2 prime uh, full model that two, you needed two waves to explain this strange um, moving away from the, the, the data, the smooth pattern that we were coming down smoothly, but suddenly there were many deaths, many more deaths on Friday. And this uh, fortunately, as the as the uh let me see uh, the days obviously we have the weekend friday and then you have uh saturday and sunday where the deaths came down right but still this indication is still there so this week this is not uh, finalized yet as uh, this is 21st of march this is not this is for uruguay it's not for us so uh let me see South Africa. Here we go. 22nd of March. Down we are coming down. Now these three data points are there, but this is not. This is with the with the with the reduced D model. We can see now what happened with the for South Africa with the uh, full model. So if we change this zero to one. This is the situation. Still. 
Now we, we don't we don't get convergency because the model gets a little bit crazy with these X data points up there. But we need to monitor what will happen this week. Um, and the situation may, uh, you know, that's the only indicator indication that we have that we may have a, a third wave, but it's not clear at all. And still it's very preliminary to say anything about it. So in fact, when we look at the indicator of the, of the different ratios, here, still there's no change in the Western Cape to South African ratio as it was when we have a different different waves. So the situation is not clear yet, but what I want to say as, as Ondini mentioned the other day that uh, please don't go to the rural areas, please don't get, uh, don't get crazy and, and let's keep protecting ourselves and preventing anything because uh, the, the thing is not, uh, is not done yet. We show some preliminary results. I mean, we don't know anything yet because the other models don't predict any any uh, third wave yet. But these are indications. This uh, number may have been uh, some a statistical fluctuation or, 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 or some uh, black log from data from before. We don't know yet, and we are expecting this week to to see. You know, out of the week, the weekend, we may have more. Uh, more clarity on, on the behavior of the pandemic. And we'll certainly say more next Tuesday. So at this stage, I think I'm, I'm ah, one more thing. I want to say one more thing. One, one more thing uh, for, let me close this one. Um, here. So I wanted to say that we can also study uh, the uh, universality, right? Universality of. Uh, COVID-19 by shifting this, uh, this uh, equation here by uh, a T max, which corresponds uh, to minus B national log of C, where T max is actually the time, the peak. Remember, this was the inflection point in the D model. So this corresponds to the T max on the D prime model, right? And uh, by dividing this by uh, dividing by a over c, the total, which is remember, is the total number of uh, total number of deaths at uh, at uh, t going to infinity, right? When we did the L'Hopital, this is a over c. So once you do that, uh, you get a normalized function. Uh, a normalized function. Let's uh, make a new one here. I, which is equal to uh, the normalized time equal to c. Uh, let me see. I have it here. One plus c. One plus. I don't see the c. E t. Uh, uh, let me see. T minus T max over B. And here again, we have A, C, yeah. E, T minus T max over B, right? I think that's correct. So where, again, as I say, T max is a shift of the function by its uh, maximum at B national log of C and by dividing by A over C. So the A here is, is a C now. So we just divide the, the, the function by A over C, right? So by doing so, by doing so, everything shifts and we have this uh, pattern, which uh, at the beginning, you know, we were very, it was very encouraging because um, it shows that there's some kind of universal behavior of the pandemic, of the COVID-19 pandemic, right? So everything is moved here to this inflection point. And here, although, you know, in the, in the normalized deaths per day, doesn't look as, 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 as promising because uh, there's obviously more, more fluctuations there, but in the cumulative data, it shows very uh, interesting pattern Four different countries at that time, US, Spain, Italy, United Kingdom, France, Germany, Iran. 
So the same thing we did uh, with a, no a normalized function for the extended SIR model. And uh, this is uh, what we came up in the paper. And still, we must uh, figure out any, uh, if there's any way to get a universal pattern, because then that will explain the, the trend and that will be very helpful for future uh, pandemics. You know, if we can understand how these things behave. And I go back to the loop at the beginning and I will investigate the, we will investigate the, the time dependent uh, parameters, which we haven't done so far. And we may have uh, to apply stochastical methods. Uh, I will invite everyone to, to be part of this if you want to be on it. Okay, so I think I am done, Jeremy. So I'm going to share, I'm going to stop sharing now. And this is what I wanted to say. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. So we'll try to share my screen. Uh, okay, so do, do you see my, uh, my screen here? Yeah. Okay, uh, good. So uh, as uh, Nico said, I have made some slight modification in the code, but actually uh, don't be scared. It's only uh, modifications uh, to, to get something which is more user-friendly or, or more easy to, to read. There is no modification on how the fit uh, are done or, or how the analysis is done. Uh, so there is uh, in the new files, uh, you should have all these files. So two, uh, one C and one H file for the daily uh, death analysis. One C and one H file for the uh, total death analysis. Uh, and one uh, Python script to uh, download the data from uh, worldometers. So uh, just starting with the Python script. So uh, first, I have uh, I have uh, written uh, the different uh, prerequisite packages that need to be installed uh, on your computer to be able to run this script, and they need to be installed uh, using the base command lines, the pipe three install, uh, and then we pass through the different uh, <laughs> includes of the Python utilities. And then we can uh, start to go to what is uh, interesting for us. So um, the first thing that you, you can parameter, parameter is the data path. So it's where you want to uh, download the data on your, uh, on your disk. And then you specify the uh, website uh, that we, we want to use. So here it's the worldometer. But for example, for what Nico just uh, spoke before, if uh, you want to try to modify this script to be applicable on something else, here you can uh, modify this URL. Well, there will be also other things to modify. But. Um, and then we need to select which countries we want to download. Uh, so here, if you just uh, uncomment this line, uh, putting an empty string, this will be understood like uh, I want to download all. But all can take a bit of time because it will uh, directly go to this page and download all these countries. And there is many countries on, on Earth. <laughs> so you can uh, just uh, for test uh, use a few countries or make your uh, own uh, selection uh, here. Uh, so here, for the example, I've just put uh, three, uh, three countries with a uh, of, uh, of course, the favorite one, South Africa. Uh, and then we enter in the main code. Uh, so um, this is what will be uh, actually when you when you launch the script, what will be called. Uh, and so what is uh, done in this main, we just start a timer here to, to see how, how long is it to download the data. Then we will uh, create, uh, if it's not existing, the output directory to download the files. Uh, and then we win, uh, we will uh, build uh, one file containing all the available countries. So this file, uh, when you execute this script for the first time, uh, is not existing. So if I just uh, execute my script for the first time, you will see that I have first downloaded something and then updated the three countries that were in my uh, selection. 
And now, if I look, you see I have a worldometer folder. And in this one, I have this country list uh, .csv. And here I have all the countries with the different link to the uh, web page uh, of each country. That's why this file is uh, mandatory and downloaded when you execute the script for the first time. And then it will check in the uh, countries that you have uh, requested here, if they are well in the uh, country.csv uh, file that you have uh, downloaded. Um, <clears throat> Okay, so what uh, what is uh, is done next? Uh, we next we will make uh, the loop on the different countries we have uh, requested, and for this we will call. Uh, so okay, uh, we will call something which is uh, named the data frame, uh, which is a two-dimensional and a size mutable uh, tabular data in Python. And then in the loop, we will uh, go for each country. So we will uh, happen to the base uh, website, the link for each country. And what will be done actually is like if you go uh, in uh, to this web page, and then on this web page, it will look for uh, the graphs that are plotted. And this is here that you ask uh, to go to this graph. So here I ask for the total cases and total death. But this means uh, actually that if you want, you can also add uh, some data to ask the active cases uh, or other graphs you can find on this page. So to do that, what is done, uh, we are calling uh, a function which is named uh, clean data. Um, which is uh, called, uh, which is uh, declared here. I will not go into the detail of this function because it's a bit uh, messy and complicated and not really interesting. But then you, you you can make some try if you want to adapt it to other websites. So actually, that's all what is done in this uh, Python script. And now. Uh, as I said, you can check in Worldometers. We will have these uh, three uh, CSV files that we have uh, requested. So now we are able to call uh, the COVID-19 uh, daily and total uh, C++ code that will read these uh, CSV files. So I will start with the uh, COVID-19 uh, daily uh, C++ file. So. Uh, this one will uh, use the functions named uh, d prime, d2 prime, and the two sir and uh, sir2 functions uh, that Nico already presented. You presented all these functions uh, last week, no? Okay. So yeah. I have uh, no. First, we we have for each program a C file where all the functions are declared and a header uh, where all the global parameters and functions are defined, which is different things in C++. So here you have all the roots includes, which are necessary to process the script. And then we have the different uh, global parameters, like uh, the number of days in the smoothing window, the different model we want to use, the range of the axis, and the range for the fits, uh, etc. Here, this is the histograms that we are using. Here, you can define the, the favorite color you want to put for the different models. So I have seen that in the example that Nico showed before, it was not the same uh, than me. I don't know if you change them or if I change them between the two versions of the code. Uh, and Finally, here, uh, this is the definition of all the different uh, functions that will be the declared in the uh, C file. Uh, this is uh, just some, uh, some stuff to, to have some nice uh, printouts uh, in the terminal. So in the C file, uh, I have uh, at the beginning uh, written some help 
to know how to use these files and what are the different functions we can use. So typically, I have. Uh, oops. I have decided to modify a bit this code uh, because uh, it was not really uh, optimized for me in the way to call the main function because it was composed on, of uh, many parameters and uh, you always need to remember in which order you have to put them. And sometimes you don't want to use uh, most of them and you just want to use the last one. So it can be a bit uh, messy to, to use. So now uh, what is done is you just, you just have to use uh, one function uh, which is called analyze and with one parameter which is the country name. But then for all the different options you want to use, you have specific uh, functions that uh, will be called. So for example, there is a set model uh, method uh, and the parameters will be uh, if you want to plot the D, or D2 functions, the uh, SCR, SCR2, and if you want to use the full version of the function or not. Then you can have a function which is called uh, set smoothing, and you will uh, set the number of days uh, you want to uh, average. So by default, this, va this value is uh, set to seven. And then you have three functions to define the, diff the range uh, you want to use. So I have uh, I have uh, defined three different types of ranges. The first one is, uh, uh, but I'm not sure if finally if this is really useful or not, but you still have this possibility, is the read data range function. And uh, this one means that you will ask to read the data from uh, worldometers only from this date to this date. Uh, this can help if you want to make some clean plots uh, without uh, putting the first or the second wave. Or, so this will really uh, be focused on wh which data you want to read from the CSV file. If you put uh, the parameters to an empty string like this, uh, it will mean I will take all the data up to this one. And at the inverse, if you put the last one as an empty string, this means I will take all the data from this date to the last date, which is available in, in the data files. Um, by default, if you don't use this, uh, it will download all the data. Then you have the set axis range, uh, which is just for the plot uh, stuff. So if you want to, uh, to make a zoom on a certain uh, part of the of the dates, or if you want to uh, increase uh, the range to, uh, to have a more clearer view of the, the spectra. And um, it's the same, you can uh, ask a date from and date to, and uh, with the same thing than before, if you don't put, uh, if you put an empty string, it will take all up to the date two and uh, et cetera. And then uh, this one is, uh, I think, the most important. Uh, this is a fit uh, range. So here you will ask from when to when you will fit the data with the uh, functions you have defined with the set model. Uh, so then we will uh, have some example, of course. So now we can go uh, quite quickly into the code to see what is done. Uh, so as I said, the main function uh, is the analyzed function. So the first thing with us that will be done is uh, to initialize uh, the, the histograms. So for that, uh, because the axes are not numbers, but uh, dates, so uh, I will. So here, all is done to build the dates from the year 2020 to 2021. I hope it will not be necessary to extend this date uh, this years in the future, but we don't know if, if needed, it can be done here. So this part is uh, only dedicated to uh, defining the names of the labels, so all the dates on the x-axis. And then we will uh, build two uh, histograms, uh, the one that will be plotted, and the histogram that I, I named the dummy uh, histogram. This one is only used to contain all the dates on the axis and to make some uh, search uh, sometimes to see if one date is existing or not because on this one, as a function of the range of dates you have asked, we will uh, remove some names on the axis and it will be not no more possible to make the test we want to make. So 
this one is not uh, used for the plots, but just for uh, make some interaction with the, the dates axis. And all of the, the following is just for uh, have a nice uh, titles and size and etc. So then uh, I have a I call a function which is named print parameters. So this one actually will just uh, before to start the feed recall uh, all the different options you have asked, and then you will have to just press a key to say, uh, okay, well, this is well the parameters I wanted to use, uh, you can fit. Uh, so then we will uh, got the download, not download, but read the file, a CSV file for the country we have asked. And we will call a function uh, which is named read data. Uh, and so this function will really open the CSV file and read the data. So we can go, this is not really interesting here. This is just uh, how to uh, to make a loop on, on uh, the, all the file and uh, extract the different dates and numbers from the CSV file. I'm not sure this is really important to go inside. Okay. Uh, so what uh, what we do next? Uh, yes, here uh, this can be important to to know. Uh, there is a threshold uh, death mean, which is set by default at ten, and uh, this is used. I'm not sure this is really useful now, but uh, we have defined this at the really beginning because the first. Uh, death uh, at the beginning of the COVID were, were not really in a, in a meaningful uh, distribution. So this was a parameter to uh, avoid to uh, the, the first one, but actually it could be removed or you still have the possibility to play with this parameter here. It was to avoid to have some fits which are uh, not converging for, due to the first date. Um, okay, so in the files we are downloading from Worldometers, uh, what we have is always the total number of days of death per day. But here we want to plot the daily number of deaths. So this function is just used to make the difference between two consecutive days to uh, add uh, in uh, this vector, so the daily death vector, the different values per day. Per, per day. Uh, okay, so then uh, we will call a function which is named the smooth vector. So you give to this function the number of day you want to average and the two vectors uh, you want to, uh, to, to average and it will directly, so the same, uh, Will, I will not go into the detail of what is done, but it will take uh, these vectors, make the average on a sliding window uh, of n days, and modify the uh, vectors you have uh, put as parameters. So after this method, you will still have these two vectors for the number of deaths and the error on this number, but which is now averaged. And finally, uh, here I just uh, using the, uh, as I said before, the dummy histogram and the x axis to get the different dates and I defining the different ranges for the fit and for the plot. So now we can just keep all of this and pass to the uh, model uh, instantiation and the fits. So, here, this is something that can be interesting uh, for you in your test because uh, fit, uh, even with root or with uh, anything else, it's uh, never a, a exact science. And you will find some cases where all is working perfectly and some other. Uh, excuse me, which uh, screen are you, uh, are you seeing now? Seeing the code itself, uh, do you know what I mean? Just, just looking ah, at the code. Okay, just because I, I just uh, saw on the screen just on my side that I was sharing my screen, but I'm, <laughs> I was wondering if this was a good one. Okay, perfect. 
So, uh, as I said, sometimes the fit will converge perfectly and sometimes not. And uh, there is two things to adapt in this case. The first one is the minimizer that we are using and the different options on the minimizer. Uh, and the second one is the, parameter, the fit parameters initialization and the definition of the limits of the different parameters. So here I have defined what I've, I found it to be the best uh, minimizer, but in some cases it can be, uh, can be used to, uh, to modify how the fit is performing. And then we will go into different if uh, to see which model we want to, uh, to fit and plot. So here we have the D model. Uh, so for this one, we will have three parameters to initialize. And each time you will see that I have a, another parameter, but actually this is not really a parameter because this one is fixed. This is to define the T0. So T0 is not a parameter, this is just to to uh, shift, uh, uh, no. this is just an easiest way for me to uh, initialize uh, all the different fits in a general way. Because if you are fitting a first wave or a, a second wave, uh, the initialization can be difficult. But using this T0, uh, it will allow to that all the other parameters will, will be the same. Um, so here, uh, this is also important to know, here this is the initialization of the parameters. And here I defi I'm defining the limit, uh, the range of the parameter. So these things, the initialization and the limits are uh, quite important to have in mind when, when a fit is not converging and you want to uh, make it converge. I don't know, Nico, when, when you use the code, do you have uh, usually to modify this, these numbers or is it working almost every time? It is working almost every time, but I had to change. Uh, obviously, when you do the feed, the feed, you need to change the dates, right? <clears throat> Otherwise, yes. you cannot fit. Yes. You cannot fit everything, yes. right? Yeah. Uh, okay. And then... But changing, changing the, the limits. At the beginning, I remember we had to change. Uh, we had to change those, but not anymore. It's been very consistent for. Okay, good. And the last thing, uh, then I will not go into so much detail for the other one because it will be the same for each model. But just to finish this one, uh, what is done here is to uh, build the uh, the error propagation. So the the width, uh, the, the bandwidth that we see on the plots. So actually what is done is I create an histogram, which is a, a copy of the original one, actually of something like this. And then I will define the error of the histogram using the, uh, the, um, the uh, what's the name? Um, the correlation uh, matrix of the fit. So um, this is uh, how to, to proceed. Uh, so this is for the D model. And then we have the definition of the D2. In the case of you are using the full version of the reduced version of the parameters. Then for the SCR1 and for the SCR2. And at the end of the code, uh, this is only if uh, some code to print the fit uh, results uh, and parameters on the uh, on the plot. So now to see uh, in practice uh, how it works, uh, I will call using a root, and you can directly uh, call the this code. And I can just directly uh, make the, the analyze function. So South Africa, uh, I think I need to. So as I said, when you make this command, no, you just, uh, this is a, you have a printout, which is re, re, recalling 
what are the parameters you are using. So here, this is only the default one because I have not modified anything. So I have asked to make the D2 prime and the SR2 using the full uh, mod parameters. My smoothing window is to seven days and I am reading all the data, uh, the axis, the range axis is adapted to the data I am reading and the fit axis also. So I just press one key to continue and up here I have the result. So as I defined, I have not defined any range. Uh, obviously it's quite uh, complicating to fit something like this. But you can see that uh, anyway, the D2 model uh, wants to uh, predict uh, your uh, two, uh, two curves, two bumps here. So now uh, we will uh, try to focus uh, on the second wave. Uh, so what I can do is first, you, you also have for the beginning have the possibility to put all the different models to zero. So up, up, up. Like this, oops. I have nothing which is uh, fitted and I, I can uh, just uh, define the, the range uh, that I want. So here I see that uh, I want to fit something like uh, first from 1st December to, uh, to now. So I will uh, call the set uh, fit range from 1st uh, December. 22 uh, to now. So for now, I will uh, just put uh, an empty string. And now I can, uh, each time the, the fit is done on my other screen. So. Uh, uh, okay, so here I forgot to ask for uh, some models. <laughs> so I will ask for the uh, D2 and SR2 with the full version. Up. And uh, we see actually that uh, indeed uh, the fit range has been adapted to what I have asked. Uh, but we can see that it's difficult to see uh, the uh, prediction in the future because the range is stopping to uh, the 26th of March. So uh, we can just using the set axis range from now to uh, we'll say uh, first uh, August. Up and uh, we process again the fit. So nothing has changed for the fit because uh, the fit range has been defined before. But here I only modified the range uh, for, on which I want to plot the, the figure. So here we see uh, actually exactly what uh, Nico uh, has shown before with this uh, three uh, points here, the uh, D prime two model uh, wants now to predict the second peak here. Uh, but we can also say that I don't want to trust uh, these points and I want to uh, reduce uh, the fitting uh, uh, window uh, to, to skip them. And so for this, I will just recall the fit range and I will say, for example, for the uh, 3 of March 21. And by recalling again the analyze function. Up. Now I will have uh, something which is indeed uh, excluding these uh, last points. So actually that's all for the, for the daily uh, analysis, I think. Uh, is there some options that we have not tried? No, I don't think so. So we can uh, go to the other one. And actually the other one is, uh, the, the code is, is typical, uh, is really similar to the first one. Uh, the only different things are the models uh, that are not the same and the histograms, which is not the same because we are now fitting uh, the total and no more the daily numbers, uh, number of deaths. So if I call now this one, uh, I can still make the same thing. So asking nothing and see uh, what happened. 
So here, uh, by default, I'm, I'm only uh, fitting the D2 uh, model in the full version. So it's quite complicated to fit uh, all the, the global range with only this uh, D2 function, but uh, you have a try. And you can see here the D2 result and the two uh, uh, functions that are, uh, that are inside. Um, something which is new uh, that uh, Nico uh, asked me a few, few days ago is to have the possibility to, uh, to fit only, for example, the second wave. And for this, with the default uh, D function, it was not possible uh, because the D function will always go to zero for a uh, minus uh, infinity time. And so I uh, needed to add an offset parameter. And to define it, now uh, you need to so call the set model method. So for this one, you only have the D and D2, D2 model. And you can ask if you want it in full mode or not, and if you want to add an offset. So here I will only plot the D2 uh, in full version, but I will ask for an offset in order to be able to fit only the second wave. Uh, and I will keep the range I have used before. So this one. And now if I the analysis. You can see here uh, that we have this offset just to fit this second wave. Here are the two functions, uh, individual function, and in uh, in green uh, the uh, the global uh, D two function. Sorry, is that what you wanted, uh, Nico? Yeah, that's very 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 nice. <clears throat> I just was looking at the at the at the end at the plateau. It seems like we are not uh, fully reproducing the the trend. It, go, it keeps going up. Yes. It doesn't. It doesn't. Uh, how do you call it? The flatten, right? Yeah. But you have you have uh, here in the last points also the three uh, three right, or four right, last right, points right. that uh, that's, that's we don't it. like. Yeah. yeah, those are the points that we don't know whether they are true or not. You know, we, yeah. this week we learn more. Uh, I'm not sure I have any other things to to say, or if you want uh, me to explain some more things or some things in more detail. Uh, if uh, there are any questions, uh, maybe we should leave. Uh, they are all, all. Everyone is asking how, how, how to use these codes. Who can be connecting the Department of Mathematics and apply mathematics? You know, everyone is asking how to how to use them. We have people from Australia, from other universities in, in South Africa. So it's, there's a, a very nice feedback from from everyone. And uh, let's let's uh, give the students a few minutes if they want to ask any questions. You have the question and answers uh, where you can actually uh, go there and ask or just ask uh, use the opportunity and ask Jeremy if uh, if you have any any questions on the code. I, I forgot to to say a few words quite quickly on the COVID player I have developed also. I don't know if we, first perhaps we ask for we wait for questions and then I I quickly uh, speak about this. Yeah, but if if, if while we ask, are there any questions uh, which they have questions they they all say thank you yes, so thank you for everyone. There, sorry, Ilya, any questions? Yes, so far there is no questions, yeah, because there was some questions of the technical character where the talks is recorded. I answered them and yes, some people wants to, you know, to, to get a connection to Nico. So I, I, I assume that Nico can reply on that question, but there is no the questions by the substance of the talk essentially, so far. So for instance, there's a question by Dr. Nahib Harum from UWC, mm -hmm. um, I think before was a, you, you, a case then. So how can we test the accuracy of the method? What do, do you mean? mean by test the accuracy? Well, we have, we have this, uh, uh, as you explained before, and you show the correlation matrix. This provides uh, symmetric errors. And sometimes uh, we know that, the, that sometimes we get these negative uh, negative errors on the on the on the on the low side because the, the errors are sometimes they go 
negative, but this is there is a, a, a way to do so. But over time, the errors obviously the reduce, and this is not a problem. So at the beginning, it's a problem, but just it's just an indication when the error bars, when the error uh, bands are too too broad. Obviously, that means that the, the accuracy is not very good. The data and the and the and the model doesn't doesn't apply very well. But as data comes in, these uh, error propagation bands they come narrower and narrower. And the the I guess that's the the way to tell uh, to tell the, the accuracy of the method. Don't you do you think so, uh, Jeremy? Yes, yes, uh, clearly. And this and the k squares that you can obtain. Typically oh. here, Hi. I just uh, launches um, exactly, yeah. the, the script uh, just using a very short uh, fit with fit window so it was from 1st to 15 december and we have what you are explaining here the errors uh, are so important uh, in the propagation of the errors that these uh, error bonds are huge you can do whatever you want with this right right, um, right. And we have actually also here this trend, which is not uh, physical, this, this, with this decreasing trend of the error bonds. But this is only, uh, as you said, because we use symmetric errors. And so it will uh, apply the error you have here uh, on the same uh, fine, below. So this is why it's negative. Right. So someone is asking uh, uh, Jeremy about your COVID player. I think yes. you should show the, you should show the COVID player. It's more user friendly, I guess. Although I, I recommend the students to go through the route, no, to, to learn the hard the hard way. But the COVID player is very nice also for everyone to. So the COVID player, as uh, its name, it's more a player to uh, make some plots uh, or nice or funny plots, but not really to go in the analysis. You will not have the possibility to modify the code by hands, or it, you have the possibility, but it will be more complicated. Uh, that's why Nico uh, prefer this one because uh, with this one he can do more uh, easily what he wants. Uh, so um, for the COVID player, it's uh, on a Git. Also, uh, also the students learn more. I want the students. Yes. Also, the aim is that. Uh... You're totally right. Uh, so this is uh, on uh, Git. Uh, I, I can send uh, the link to uh, please to Nico then. Um, so on the GitLab, you have a readme. Uh, that explain quite quickly how it works and how you can install it. So you just have to download the data, install the different prerequisites and compile the code. And then you will have this uh, COVID player uh, root uh, interface. So I will uh, launch it. Uh, so you, when, when it's installed, but it's written in the readme, you, you need to uh, up. you need to source this uh, environment. Uh, Can you put the link in the in the in the chat in the chat um, tool? Yes, the link course. to the GitHub. Yeah. Uh, where can I access to the chat? Uh, ah, okay, here. Down there. It's okay like this? You have it? Yeah. Up. So here uh, I just called the command COVID player and it's uh, opening uh, this uh, window. So there's different things. Here I have, I can ask if I want to plot cases or death uh, and if which country I want to plot. Uh, so this time we will uh, do my favorite one. Uh, okay. You can ask if you want to plot total or daily uh, uh, rates, the smoothing window, and then the range uh, in dates uh, you want to, to plot. So here for the moment it will only plot the data, there is no fit inside. Uh, I will ask for uh, something like this. Um, if I ask for the total, I will have something like this. So you can uh, also change the color. Uh, you also have the possibility that there is different options. You can, if I activate this, it will plot the ratio to the population of each country. So if you want to overimpose different countries, oh, wow. you can make this with the ratio to the population. 
uh, you can click on this same uh, button and like this you will have the possibility to uh, overimpose different countries um, and this here you, you have the update so if you click on update actually it will call the script that i have presented before and make the update of the data and here this is if you want to save the result in a pdf or png or what you want you can save it like this um, you also have then the possibility to uh, so if you ask for here i want for the france uh, i want to fit uh, the model with uh, the d2 uh, no sr2 model you have here all the parameters for the initialization and the limits uh, of the fit and uh, if I Very nice. we'll do something like only for the first wave to the 19th of June. Up. If it's in red, this means that the date doesn't exist. <laughs> in blue, uh, this means that it's okay from the date. Uh, okay. Up. So if you can fit, and here I have the fit, and I have the fit result here, but also in the terminal. And um, when it's in green, this means that the fit has converged. And um, if I put something uh, with, uh, impossible like, like this, no, it converges also with this. That one is not converging. No, but that's strange because it's fit and converged. Hmm. Okay, so perhaps there is still some uh, some smaller errors, but. Anyway, uh, you can clear the fits. Uh, um, or do your favorite one. So that's that's all actually for uh, for this player. Uh, no, I don't think there is other things to say about this. Is there any question about this? I was looking at the uh, the questions. Uh, uh, want, I think we answered most of the questions while we were talking. So, unless Ilya, Ilya, do you have any questions there? No, no. I think everything. Um, no, I don't see any questions. So, but, uh, nothing. As uh, as everyone knows, the the, the video will be. Upload uh, it later on, so you can continue and go slowly to what uh, Jeremy has mentioned here. You can go as slow as you can with the video and check things out uh, in a, at your own pace. You have the 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 COVID player on the on the chat, and we are going to put it also on our uh, on our COVID nineteen uh, on the mini school uh, GitHub. So we link the two of them. So basically, uh, you get all the information. Some people asking about the mathematics. I think Cloud Makatsu is the is the person to contact uh, the mathematics department at UWC. And uh, you know, I think uh, I think people are having fun. And this is the main thing. You know, whoever is 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 in the in the meetings. In the lectures, they're, they're learning something. And my purpose is, you know, sometimes uh, we believe when we understand the situation, some of our students won't be able to compile a program or they won't be able to install Ubuntu or, or whatever. So we are in the process of creating a virtual machine for everyone to use the browser. So everyone can go and, and access these codes and run them without the necessity of installing or installing Ubuntu. But Ubuntu is two things, right? It has a, 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 it's an operating system, but it has a meaning, right? Which is uh, that, uh, you know, you are because we, we are and we are all together. It's like uh, the community thing, right? So we need to learn that, uh, you know, if, if a couple of students know how to do the, how to do the, how to run the codes, how to change the Python program, that student can teach the others and the others and the others. And so on. this is our advantage as, uh, as we are in South Africa to apply Ubuntu uh, and not only the operating system, but the uh, the actual meaning of Ubuntu 
and teach each other. You know, if only two or three or five uh, students can learn now, those five, I want them to teach another five and those five, another five. And hopefully uh, in a few months, you know, uh, everyone can catch up and learn how to use the, these codes. And not only to use these codes, but obviously to change them and to, and to modify and to do something different, right? As we are also proposed. So Sorry, there's some questions. Sorry. Yeah, there is a question in the Q&A from Anakin and he's asking, firstly, I'd like to thank Jeremy and Nico for fantastic, uh, for facilitating this unique learning opportunity. Secondly, I would like to know if there is a scope for the SIR model to be modified to include the effects of vaccinations and et cetera. You want to say something, Jeremy? Uh, it's difficult to answer. So the, the practical way, uh, if you you want to modify the code, uh, this it's uh, you have uh, all in uh, your hand. You just have to to change uh, to change the, the the code, which is uh, the function is is defined uh, here. So you can make what you want, but uh, how to uh, to correctly uh, take into account uh, the vaccination in uh, the model, uh, I'm not sure this is so so easy. Uh, it's not so easy. Maybe maybe it will change the spreading rate, this lambda that we have in the in the SIR equations, right? But uh, at the end of the day, there are these uh, other codes. You know, this is a, a simple um, naive uh, interpretation of a COVID-19 pandemic for everyone to understand. Actually, it works quite nicely for, for the simplicity of, of the model, right? So I believe that this may change the spreading rate once you have a, a substantial amount. I was investigating countries like Israel and, and Chile and South Africa, where, where you have either a, a very high uh, percentage of vaccination. And you see, we have similar, similar patterns so far, say, in Israel and South Africa. The, the plots look very similar. The, the, the increase of the second wave started at the same time. The US also also having a similar plot. The UK is also dropping, you know, uh, but, you know, we see other countries where, where vaccination hasn't been such a, uh, it's not a, a very high percentage of uh, population being vaccinated. As, as you can see here, you can have a look at the difference and uh, can I share the screen for a sec? Yeah. We have a, uh, we have a, a web page where I like I like to go from time to time. I think I took this, uh, this is from Jeremy. Uh, here is the coronavirus vaccination, right? You have this vaccination. I agree. And you can see how uh, Israel, you know, has like a hundred and twelve percent. You know, even dogs and cats are being vaccinated. The rest is uh, United Arab Emirates has 73%. And it will be interesting to see uh, the different plots and uh, of these countries compared to other countries. So for instance, show before Italy. And uh, in Italy, we can see yet a new wave coming. In Italy, uh, if we go uh, again, if we go again to the, to the web page, uh, we can check up down here. We can check here by country, by map. But this is just not uh, conclusive. In Italy, we have 13%, 13 out of 100. France is also about 13. Spain, the same, 13 out of 100. The same similar numbers here. And in the UK, uh, we have 40-something uh, percent. So if we go to, the, to these different countries, we start South Africa. It looks like, like this, right? Uh, there's an opening here, which I don't know really what that means. But if we go to, to countries like uh, Italy, we see there's yet, yet another, a new wave. But this happened before the vaccination. So the, we don't know what happened as the numbers increase. I believe that the spreading rate will, will decrease. But then also I have here, peop, uh, you know, we have Israel, where things follow very nicely, a very nice trend, similar to South Africa, where you have two the functions explaining the data. And here we have 100%, over 100% of the, of the people are being vaccinated. I don't know what that really means. But, uh, you know, we have uh, like sorry, a Nico. Yeah. 
I think I think uh, that's a problem with this because I don't know where these guys take data for the vaccinations. But I think I've heard about the Bloomberg uh, vaccination tracker that they essentially because the vaccine is two component, they just bulk it together. So it's like okay. it's the uh, people who get the number of one component, vac first component vaccine, oh, oh, and the people see, who see, get see. the second component vaccine, which is All obvious right, so. have duplicities. Oh, okay, so, so yeah, that's people, where these crazy numbers are coming. This hundred, over hundred okay. percent, right? Thank you, Ilya, for, yeah, the, yeah. for the clarification. But still, there's no clear indication at this stage that this 100% of vaccinations, or not 100%, whatever is the that uh, number, is affecting. There's any difference between South Africa, which, where we have a still a very low percentage, not even 1%. As you can see here, it's 03 So there's going to be a, a, a long way before vaccination are going to play a role in South Africa, unfortunately. So maybe once we have the vaccination in the States and in the UK and Israel, then maybe we can have more coming here. It's incredible the case of Chile, you know, how, how well they, they acted in the first place, almost 50% of the population. It's difficult to know how this will affect. Every, every week we get this question and we are keeping investigating, investigating the effect. Just but, before, uh, yeah. we, we need also to be uh quite uh, to be careful with uh, the comparison between the different countries that uh, that are applying the vaccination because for example in france uh, we have almost or soon 10 percent but this is 10 percent of people only uh, that, are, that are more than uh, 60 uh, years old right, right. but right. in many other countries there is no selection in the uh, age of the people that are uh, vaccinated right. this can yeah. change quite a lot of uh, different uh, interpretations. Yeah, there are many possibilities. And then you have this, uh, this super extended SIR models where you have 35 uh, parameters to play with. And then you can, you know, you can turn left, you can turn right, you know, you can even predict when Elvis Presley will come to earth or when, you know, next uh, Jesus will come to earth. So it's, it's, it's difficult to, to say with these simple pa parameters and these simple models, what will happen. Okay, okay, Sorry. yeah, thank you very much. And I think we can give it back to the Francesco. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Okay, no, thank you very much for another interesting uh, lecture. And uh, we had lots of uh, comments and questions, which is always uh, a very good sign to keep people engaged. So, <clears throat> Nico, thank you and, uh, and your team. Yeah, thank you very much, Jeremy and, uh, and, and, and the others for, 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 for the very nice presentation. And we are all looking forward for the, for the final fireworks next week. Yeah, so uh, please, the, the, the participants stay tuned. We will put the lecture on, uh, on YouTube uh, as soon as possible, as soon as the recording is, is converted so that maybe people that missed the lecture for whatever reason are able to, to catch up and be with us again next week. Yeah, so thank you very much, everyone. Uh, thank you, Ilya, for moderating the questions and um, Nico and, and Jeremy in particular, a, a big, big thank you. Thank you very much. Have a good afternoon and we'll see you next thank week. You. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, thank Jeremy. You. All the best. Bye, thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.